Hi everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I start with today's session, there are two pieces of information for you all. One is that we have launched the RBI Grade B Crash Course. So this very course can help you prepare for both phase one as well as phase two together. And it has been offered at a massive discount. So if you want to get further details about the course, you can visit our website. Secondly, we have also launched our new application. So you can download it from the Play Store. It will provide you all the necessary exam related updates, the pre -quiz, all the quizzes, and it would help you prepare better for your exams. So now, Moving on to first question. So before that, one more thing. If you want the free PDF of this very session, then please join our Telegram group. The free PDFs are provided over there only. So now moving on to first question that says, where has the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub been set up? So recently it was in news that RBI has set up its Innovation Hub. So where is this very hub located? The answer is option B, Bangalore. So let's discuss a bit about RBI Edge. What role does it play? Why has RBI launched this very hub? And why it has been launched in Bangalore or set up in Bangalore? So first of all, I will talk about RBI Innovation Hub. Ki. So recently, RBI's governor, Mr. Shakti Das, inaugurated it in Bangalore. Now, that very place is a hub where we have all the necessary technology available. A great ecosystem exists over there. There are a lot of uh, people expert in the field of technology. All the technology related um, infrastructure that is needed, it is there in Bangalore. So that's why RBI has set up that this very hub over there. So uh, this hub has been set up as a Section 8 company. So you would be aware about Section 8 companies, the non-profit organizations which usually work to develop certain, uh, uh, certain, to do certain kind of a development work right, related to promoting the research or promoting the technology or promoting something else. So that's a Section 8 company and RBIH has been set up as a, as a Section 8 company. And the initial contribution, the initial capital contribution for RBIH is 100 crores. So now let's discuss a bit about why RBIH has been set up. So it is to encourage and nurture financial innovation. We are working a lot in promoting fintechs. Okay, how financial services can be rendered using the technology. Technology ka use karke or better way mein financial services provide ki ja sakti hai. Financial inclusion promote kiya ja sakta hai. Technology helps a lot in making sure that these financial services reaches every nook and corner of the country. So, there are many startups which have a lot of ideas, hai, but they lack necessary mentorship, necessary training, or the expertise, and certain funding. So, this very hub is going to help them. It is going to nurture these startups. And by that way, it's going to nurture financial innovation in India. Koi startup hai, ya koi uh, apna startup karna chata hai, and they have great ideas which can help promote financial innovation. So the role of RBI is to encourage them. By doing so, it's going to encourage financial innovation in India and it can take the India's fintech sector to great heights. India will also benefit and India ki reputation will build up that how good technology is financial services in respect mein India. Ke paas. So it's a step towards having an institutional setup for financial innovation in India. Now talking a bit more about this very hub. So it's not first time that I'm discussing about RBIH. Last year also I talked about this. In one of the monetary policy statements, to monetary policy statement aati hai, jab August 2020 mein statement IT at that time RBI talked about setting up RBI's innovation hub. So tabhi announcement hui thi and then they started building up the board of RBIH and Sri Senapati Kopal Krishnan was appointed as its chairman. We have discussed discuss kiya tha. Then in May, we also discussed about Mr. Rajesh Pansal being appointed as its CEO. So proper board ready here, proper uh, CEO and all sub appointed here. And now physical hub has been set up to provide an institutional setup in Bangalore. 
नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट आर बी आई एच क्या फंक्शन रहेंगे आर बी आई एच के क्या काम करेगा आर बी आई एच वट इज इट ऑल अबाउट सो ये आर बी आई की एक होली ओल्ड सब्सिडरी है दैट इज गोइंग टू वर्क टू वर्ड फाइनेंशियल इनोवेशन इन इंडिया सो ये एक ऐसा इन्वायरमेंट क्रिएट करेगा जिससे कि फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर के फील्ड में इनोवेशन इंकरेज होंगे सो इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू बिल्ड ब्रिंग वर्ल्ड क्लास इनोवेशन टू फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर कपल्ड विद फाइनेंशियल इंक्लूजन so we have to focus on using the technology to render financial services and at the same time the main focus should be on making sure that these financial services these financial products reach the low income people ones who are not having the access the rural areas or certain low connectivity areas kaise hum innovations ke sath aaye naye naye ideas ke sath aaye jo ye make sure karega कि ये जो सारे फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स या सर्विसेज हैं या डिजिटल पेमेंट मैकेनिज्म हैं ये उन एरियाज में भी पहुंच सके जहां इतनी अच्छी इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी नहीं है नाउ यूपीआई पी आई वन टू थ्री पे हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड देन सो व्हाट इज दिस दीज आर सम इनोवेशन जो हेल्प करेंगी कि जिनके पास इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी नहीं है वो भी कैसे ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन uh, जिनके पास कनेक्टिविटी नहीं है वो भी कैसे फाइनेंशियल सर्विस यूज कर सकते हैं सो दीज आर फ्यू स्टेप्स इन दैट रिगार्ड now talking about this hub even further so it is going to converge various stakeholders now banking sector financial sector the insurance sector sab log saath mein work karenge ye ek tarah se startups ko bhi encourage karega banking sector ke professionals bhi iska part honge various regulators will be the part of this very hub various academicians will be there so overall financial innovation promote karna in sab stakeholders ka kaam hoga और ये हब का काम क्या है ये प्लेटफॉर्म प्रोवाइड कर रहा है ब्रिंगिंग टुगेदर दी स्टेक होल्डर्स सो देर आर लॉट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन विच आर एक्सिस्ट इन इंडिया इंडिया में बहुत से बैंक्स हैं बहुत से बिजनेसेस हैं बहुत से फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन हैं ऐसे कई स्टार्टअप्स हैं कई वेल एस्टेब्लिश फर्म्स हैं विच आर वर्किंग इन द एरियाज ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इनोवेशन और दे प्रोवाइड सम ऑफ दर फाइनेंशियल सर्विस बट टेकिंग इन टू कंसिडरेशन द प्रेजेंट सिनारी आज की अगर हम इन्वायरमेंट की बात करें ग्लोबल सिनारी की बात करें तो कई चीजें दूसरी कंट्रीज में हैं जहां इंडिया अभी कहीं ना कहीं लैक कर रही है एंड एवरी एवरी नाउ एंड देन समथिंग और द अदर इट गेट्स इंट्रोड्यूस्ड ओके कुछ ना कुछ इंप्रूवमेंट चाहिए दी इन्वायरमेंट इज डायनेमिक एंड वी नीड टू चेंज विद द चेंजिंग टाइम्स अगर अडेप्ट नहीं करेंगे इंप्रूव नहीं करेंगे तो वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू मेक फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर स्ट्रॉगर सो टेक्नोलॉजी चेंज हो जाती है रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसीज चेंज हो जाती है ग्लोबल चेंजेस होते हैं and everything uh, if we are building up absolutely a new infrastructure every time it will be very really, very really costly so we need some platform which brings together all the businesses or the stakeholders in the banking financial sector insurance sector so that they can work together in promoting financial innovation in india so wo jo platform ki zarurat hai wo trusted platform hai rbi h then if there is any new startup which has a new idea that can help in financial innovation so rbi is just going to identify those people it's going to mentor such startups and invest in such startups to help them grow and emerge as great fintech firms okay so if very hub ka part government ministries bhi hongi departments bhi hongi they will be seeing what are the problems existing with the existing systems and how we can improve and they will find the potential solutions and implement them okay so this was all about rbih what is their motto their motto is innovation inclusion and impact so they want to come with new products new financial products and services that's what innovation is all about then they need to make sure that these financial services reach every part of the country okay so to catalyze financial inclusion by enabling access to friction less financial services for 1.3 billion indians sab tak financial services pahunchana this is their second motto and third is to create an impact when they will be promoting these startups who have new ideas related to financial sector then obviously it will generate more um, employment opportunities and uh, it will help these startups as well so economic opportunities provide kar dega you have and then what are the three pillars so the three pillars of rbih the three pillars of innovation are product process and policy innovation so they need to work on improving on their product coming up with new products and services they need to ease the process it's just way mein ye uh, suppose if you are making a digital payment the process of making that payment should be simpler okay and then policy innovation so 
every now and then come up with better policies, better technology related updates. And all this is done to empower digital economy to ensure financial innovation. Now coming to the question. So we have already discussed about the first question. Second question is also related to this. It says which of the following correctly relates to RBIH. So let's read these statements one by one. The first one says RBIH has set up RBIH as RBI has set up RBIH as Section 8 company, correct? Gopal Krishnan is the current RBIH CEO. No, he is the chairman. And RBIH's motto is all about innovation, inclusion and impact, correct? Rajesh Pansal is the current chairman of RBIH. No, he is the current CEO. So only first and third statement are correct. That's the answer is option A. Now coming to next question and next topic of today. That says identify the concept. So, ek bar ye statement read kar lete hai, and then we'll try and identify what they are talking about. So, it says it refers to capturing the geographical coordinates of payment touch points deployed by the merchants to receive payments from the customers. Now, think of a situation that you go to a mall, you bought something, and you have to make a payment. Okay, uh, suppose you want to make payment through your debit card. So you would have seen a device where you swap your debit card and you enter your PIN and the transaction gets processed. Or other option is that you can scan the QR code and make the payment through UPI. So what are these? These are payment touch points. In ke through hum payments kar rahe hai. Now this concept talks about capturing the geographical coordinates of these payment touch points. Ab kaha pe ye QR code hai? Kaha pe ye... Uh, Machine hai, aapki jis pe aap transact kar rahe ho, jis ke thua transact kar rahe ho, debit card ke thua. So, if you are able to track uh, the, the location, the geographical location of these, you will get an idea about where how, or how much is the penetration of these kinds of payment systems in India. Kaha kaha ye payment systems use ho rahe hai, kaha tak aapki ye services pohach rahe hai, kaha tak nahi, is sab cheezo ko idea lag pahe ka. So, what is this process of capturing the geographical location of these payment touch points called? It's called geotagging. So, answer is option A. So, thoda sa or discuss karte hai geotagging aur iske benefits ke baare mein. Now, why I'm discussing about geotagging? That's because RBI has recently released the framework for geotagging. Okay. So, geotagging ki definition hum logo ne already discuss ki. Ab iske benefits kya hai? Agar aapko pata hai ki is very part of India mein, is district mein ya is village mein ya is city mein itne devices function kar rahe hain, you will get to know about the penetration of digital payments, okay? Ab aapko unki penetration ke baare mein pata chala, to aapko ye pata lag pae ka ki kahaan kahaan achcha infrastructure hai, kahaan hume improve karne ki zarurat hai, kahaan nai policies employ karne ki zarurat hai, kahaan additional payment systems lane ki zarurat hai. So, you will get an idea about all these things, once you get to know where these devices are, you will get to know it through geotagging, then you will get more insights on the regional penetration of digital payments. Now, after geotagging, say you analyze that, okay, in Delhi, we have a lot of options available. We don't need to deploy more payment systems there. But you say, see some, where it's some district of UP where you see that, okay, in this very region, we are not having a lot of options. So we need to have more QR code, with the merchants over there to facilitate digital payments or we need more such devices through which the debit card payments can be made. So, up identify karne ke baad deploy karne So, through this geotagging, you can monitor the infrastructure density across different locations. Aapko ye to pata lagi ka ki ye devices kaha hai aur kitna us particular location mein kitna infrastructure available hai, kitni need hai, all that can be answered through geotagging only. You will be able, once you get the insights, you can deploy these additional payment touch points if needed at that very place. And you can facilitate more on your digital literacy program. Jahan chaha pe implement kar rahe ho, fir maha pe loko literate kar rao ke, knowledge lo ke us fairy payment system ke baare mein so that they can start using it. So all these are the benefits of geotagging. And these benefits are only the reason that why RBI has introduced the framework for geotagging. RBI ka objective hai digital payments ko or deepen karna, financial inclusion promote karna. Okay, so for that, we need to make sure that the length and breadth of the country, it has the access to these payments infrastructure. Or ye kaise hume pata lag payega ki payment infrastructure hai ki nahi, it can be done through geotagging. 
ओके नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट द फ्रेमवर्क सो इसमें एक दो चीजें हैं जो डिस्कस करने वाली हैं लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट आरबीआई हैज नोटिफाइड थ्रू इट्स फ्रेमवर्क सो फर्स्ट इज दैट इट हैज टोल्ड अबाउट कैप्चरिंग द पेमेंट टच पॉइंट डिटेल्स ये डिवाइसेस जो होते हैं ना पॉइंट ऑफ सेल टर्मिनल्स दीस आर द डिवाइसेस थ्रू व्हिच यू कैन मेक पेमेंट्स विद डेबिट कार्ड्स दिस इज व्हाट आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड सेकंड आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट द क्यूआर कोड्स सो बैंक्स और एट टाइम्स देयर आर सर्टेन नॉन बैंक a payment system operators which are also offering these payment options so they need to capture the this geographical data and they need to report about the same to rbi so geo tagging se jo information collect hui wo kisko submit karni hai rbi ko aur wo information kis respect mein honi chahiye that information should be related to the pos terminals which have been used okay all these kinds of machines and the qr codes which have been used some are paper based some are soft qr codes so every that kind of a thing needs to be reported to rbi talking about the reporting guidelines so in banks or non banks psos ko jo rbi ko information submit karni hai one is that uh, it should be related to all pos terminals as well as qr codes iske sath sath kuch payment infrastructure related or kuch merchant related information bhi inko rbi ko deni hai so as far as the merchant related information is concerned the details about the merchant his id what type of a payment acceptance infrastructure has he deployed qr code use kar raha hai ki point of sale terminal use kar raha hai whatever they are using uh, pos use kar raha hai wo sab information honi chahiye then the contact details about the merchant and all okay merchant ki location kya hai address state district post office pin code tabhi pata lagega na ki kin areas mein hai payment infrastructure kin areas mein nahi hai secondly information related to payment acceptance infrastructure so general payment touch points which are used qr codes which are used all such type of information needs to be provided along with terminal type terminal id kab aapne wo operations commence kiye operating status kya hai us device ka um a terminal address state revenue center pin code so ye sari cheezon se hi rbi ye sara assessment kar sakegi and accordingly they will make the policies to deploy for the infrastructure related to these payment systems in areas where we have lack of such things okay now coming to next question which is related to this only which of the following correctly states the benefits of geo tagging so we have just discussed the benefits let's see whether those benefits have been mentioned over here or not provide insights on regional penetration of digital payments yes monitor infrastructure density across different locations yes identify the scope for deploying additional payment touch points so ye sare hi benefits hai so answer is option e now this was all about the questions there is one topic that i need to discuss i am not taking a question on this but it is important laga mujhe topic and it was worth discussing so i have added it let's discuss about this recently we have seen a major fall in india's forex reserves so india ki foreign exchange reserves hain wo kam hui hain so first of all what are forex reserves made up of we have the sdrs okay we have gold and we have foreign currency assets so it's which alag alag currency aa jati hain dollar euro jo bhi india hold kar raha hai so these things make up the forex reserves kuch time pehle i took one session where i talked about india's forex reserves rising at a record high levels but recently we are seeing the fall in india's forex reserves so let's see what are what are the major reasons behind this fall india ki forex reserves abhi kam kyu ho rahi hain one of the major and most important reason is fdi outflows now when the foreign foreign investors invested in your country they would have demanded your rupee but now when they are withdrawing their investments suppose some us investor would have invested in india uh, and now he wants to take back his invested from india back to us so he will say give me back my dollars okay i don't want i'll give you the rupee whatever i have earned and, and all that now give me back my dollars so rbi is having the reserves of those dollars out of the reserves only those dollars will be taken so jab ye outflows honge aise bahut sare investors jab apne dollars wapas mangenge ya apni currency wapas mangenge then it will reduce the foreign currency asset part of your forex reserves so ye fdi outflows major reason hai uh, forex reserves kam hone ki second reason is fed tapering so we all have discussed about this in a lot of sessions that after the pandemic and seeing the 30 year high inflation in us us federal reserve has planned to increase the interest rates so the investors who would have invested in india or other countries they are withdrawing back their invested and taking investments and taking them back to us 
सो फेट का टेपरिंग एक मेजर रीजन है एफ बी आई आउटफ्लोस के लिए एंड वी ऑल नो दैट एफ बी आई आउटफ्लोस आर गोइंग टू रिड्यूस दी फॉर एक्स रिजर्व ताकि रुपी की वैल्यू में और all na i okay so if rupees uh, so so this kind of a intervention actually reduces the reserves ab rbi ne rupee ki value kam na ho isliye dollar sell kiye wo dollar kahan se aaye wo dollar reserves mein se aaye so when they are selling those dollars the forex reserves component of in india for the foreign currency assets component of the forex reserves of india actually fall so rbi ka ye intervention to prevent the rupee from depreciating and thus selling the dollars has also led to fall in the forex reserves and fourth major reason is russia ukraine conflict so is conflict ki wajah se kya ho raha hai foreign investors jo bhi hain they are withdrawing their investments they are withdrawing their money and investing in some safer countries like us or investing in some safer currency like dollars not only the investors rather if i talk about the central banks of different countries they want a safe currency in hand which can be used worldwide so that that's why they are preferring us dollars as well so ye bhi ek reason hai outflow hone ka and then forex reserve mein fall hone ka so that's it for today's session i hope it was useful for you all with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much